The Tata Punch had one problem and that is it didn't have much in the way of punch. That has finally been addressed on this car, the Tata Punch EV. It now gets 120 bhp, 190 newton meters of torque. Can it crack 100 kmph in under 10 seconds? Let's find out. So I've got it in sport mode, brake torque it, launch. That's 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. All right. If you want to know how fast the Tata Punch EV gets to 100 kilometers an hour, you will have to watch this video. In this video, we're going to talk about everything. The changes that have been done to the exterior, the interior upgrades, the all new platform, how it rides, how it handles. We are going to take it to the karting track and put in some laps there. We are also going to do a bit of off-roading. This video is everything that you want to know about the Tata Punch EV. And if you enjoy watching videos on this channel, make sure you stay subscribed to the Evo India channel because this channel is all about enthusiasts. And this car definitely feels enthusiastic. Now, who better to talk about the design of the new Punch EV other than Martin Ularic, who is the man behind the design of this car. Martin, talk me through this. Yeah, so we have the Tata Punch EV. And what we've done is we've taken the very successful Punch product yeah. and electrified it. And we've made some design changes throughout it, uh, starting at the front. We've made the charging port right at the front. Okay. That's right under the signature DRL which uh, at night can e easily identify the car as an EV. Obviously, er everything's been driven by aerodynamics, the overall volume, but because we've migrated the product to the new architecture, the active architecture, mm -hmm. it's given us an opportunity to just enhance the product, both exterior and interior wise. Right. And on the side, you've got new wheels. Any other design elements that need to be taken note of? On yeah, the fundamentally, it was from the side view. It is the wheel elements. Yeah. Um, overall, the, the rear three quarter is all the same as okay. the current punch. Uh, even though it is sitting on the new architecture, mm -hmm. it, uh, it is essentially the, the same car. Okay. Uh, but the main thing is the front three quarter really conveys and communicates the fact that it's an EV. What's your favorite design feature on the new punch EV? To be honest, I think uh, with this type of project, I think it's the way the new elements migrate uh, and merge well with the old elements. Right. So it doesn't look like it's an afterthought or it's uh, you know been done by somebody else. It all looks very consistent and cohesive. And the same with the interior. The interior, we've made quite a lot of changes to the instrument panel. We have a new center console. We've improved the seat design. Mm -hmm. uh, we've improved a little bit even the ergonomics because of the floor height and so forth. Uh, in terms of visibility but a lot of it is you know something borrowed something new something fresh and so forth but it all comes together very nicely absolutely so those are the highlights on the new punch ev a new striking face new wheels and not too much different on the rear now let's head back to sirish who's going to talk you through the interiors of the car <laughs> The dashboard architecture remains unchanged, but you get more screens. So you get this 10.25 inch infotainment screen, it's got that Harman system on it, it's got these widgets to go through the different settings. You have your climate control, you have an air purifier, all versions of the Punch EV get the air purifier. Here you also have the AQI readout, you have the arcade.ev, which has this whole bunch of inbuilt apps. So you have racing, you have Amazon Prime, Disney Hotstar, YouTube, ESPN, AccuWeather. So a whole bunch of apps out there on the infotainment. You have this panel, the touch panel for the climate control with physical knobs for adjusting the temperature as well as the blower settings. You also have a 360 camera with this 3D mode. So you can see all around the punch. That's a nice touch on such a small little car. You have your wireless charger. You get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And in fact, if you connect Apple Maps via CarPlay, the maps display on the digital cluster. So this is another 10.25 inch screen. You have the different view modes. So you can adjust it using the buttons out here on this new design, the corporate Tata steering wheel with the illuminated logo. That also works well. All of this is actually very responsive. You have the jeweled drive mode selector. You have the sport mode, eco mode, electric parking brake. 
the punch EV gets disc brakes on all four wheels. You have the auto hold. The center architecture is the same. It's retained from the punch petrol. You have your sunroof. That costs 50,000 more. So if you want a sunroof, 50,000 more. You also get these new seats with the leatherette cover and it is ventilated. Overall, the packaging is good. The space inside is good. This also has a flat floor. So you do get a little bit better rear seat comfort. But of course, this is a mini micro SUV. So this is good for four. Five people is a bit of a squeeze in here. But overall, the layout of the dash, the features on it, the styling, the equipment is all really good. And for such a small little mini SUV to have so many features is very impressive. One drawback. The steering, it only adjusts for rake, not for reach. So it only goes up and down. It doesn't come towards you. That's the only real criticism out here. Even more significant than the changes to the styling is what's underneath all of this. So the panels and all that remain the same and that is obviously in terms of cost efficiency. But the platform, the architecture as the engineers call it, is all new. So this is the Gen 2 architecture which Tata EV is now calling the Active EV platform. This platform on the Punch EV, it's the first application of this platform. The same architecture can be scaled up to accommodate the Ultros EV. That should be coming. The Curve, the Curve EV is going to come this year. It will also underpin the Harrier EV, which they have spoken about and is in the making. So there will be five cars on this platform, including the Ciara EV. That's something that we are all waiting for. So the same architecture can have an increased wheelbase. This is the smallest. This Harrier EV will be the biggest on this platform. And obviously, as the size goes up, more battery packs can be squeezed into. Now, these don't have carryover battery packs from the Nexon EV. These are new battery cells. These are orthogonal cells. The packaging is better. And the biggest telltale that this platform is completely new is that there is no central transmission tunnel. So the floor is absolutely flat. So they've managed to harness some of the packaging efficiencies that an EV-only platform delivers. Up in the nose, you now get a frunk. So there is a usable storage space out there. You obviously retain the same boot. And this is a small SUV. This is a mini or micro SUV, whatever these SUVs are called. So it has a very compact footprint. Now the engineers have retained the same ground clearance as the petrol punch. So you have 190 mm of ground clearance. The same excellent approach, departure and breakover angles. And seriously, that is very good, nearly SUV-like. So how does the punch EV drive and how different is it to the regular punch petrol? Now, the benefits of using this new platform is that torsional rigidity has gone up. We were told that compared to a typical petrol to ice conversion, the torsional rigidity has improved by 30%. And compared to the petrol punch, the torsional rigidity has gone up by 45%. Now, because the battery is mounted low down, you also have a reduction in the center of gravity. So it has gone down by 30 millimeters, which is significant. And the benefits are in terms of dynamics. Now, to account for the extra weight, the springs are stiffer and you do feel the weight. Now, when you go over a slightly wavy or bumpy road, it does feel a bit unsettled. The rebound feels a bit too harsh and you get that slight kick at the rear, which you actually feel in the back of your neck because your head keeps getting tossed back as the rear kicks up. But you store on the speed a little bit, city driving speeds, and this is actually very comfortable. And when the roads are nice, when you're driving at a cruising speed, I'm doing 80, 85 kilometers per hour, this actually is very nice. You get a bit of EV wine, so the wine from the electric motors, that is there. There is a fair bit of wind noise because there is no frequencies or noises from the engine to cancel out the other noises. But otherwise, this is actually very relaxed. One observation is that when you step on it, like I'm right now, you get a fair bit of vibes through the steering wheel. That's a bit strange. And that only happens on wide open throttle. So when you're full flat on the throttle, at 50% travel, 60% travel, you don't get 
any of those vibes but little bit of vibes to the steering and the steering weight actually there isn't much even if you put it into sport mode there isn't much weight and the steering is dead and lifeless and honestly that would be the only real drawback or criticism that i would have about the punch ev otherwise in terms of performance this really moves so we'll pull over we'll find an empty road and we will do an acceleration test and see how fast the punch ev is now tata motors claims it'll do 0 to 100 in 9.5 seconds will it let's find out so how quick is the punch ev we got our v box connected ac off city drive mode activate sport drive mode activated we've got it into sport mode so all of the power all of the torque on hand brake torque it and launch this is quick 60 80 90 100 so tata motors claims 0 to 100 in 9.5 seconds and in our tests with the v box we got 9.35 seconds so this is a quick car it can crack 100 kmph in under 10 seconds and this is as tested with the v box So zero to hundred in nine point three five seconds, the quarter mile in seventeen point one one seconds, and a true top speed of one thirty five kilometers per hour. So the small little mini micro SUV EV is quick. So the punch has punch, but can it handle all that punch? We're now heading to the Miko Cartopia, where there are some interesting tests lined up for us. So Tata EV has set up an urban kind of environment for us here at the Meko Cartopia. It starts with the acceleration. So 120 bhp, 190 newton meters of torque, 0 to 100 in the claimed 9.5 seconds. We floor it. So the turn of speed is quick, and it's important to remember that this gets all four disc brakes. So that actually is an upgrade over the punch combustion engine. Now this is interesting. The punch has a water weighting depth of 300 mm and they have set this kind of a water weighting test for us which is slightly more than 300 mm. So if you encounter like water log patches in the rains in Mumbai or wherever in Bengaluru also this test showcases that the punch can go through quite deep water weighting. So even with an EV no problem when you are actually going through deep water patches now this is a proper city environment we've got deep potholes so you get these holes dug up into the ground over here go through it the punch ev has the same ground clearance as the regular punch 190 mm and the suspension and the platform still feels very robust so it can take all of that Here you have a dug up trench. Welcome BMC, PMC, wherever. So even through these gnarly bits, the robustness of the punch, which we've talked about before with our combustion engine, we took it to the Kolukumalai Trail in Kerala. It dealt with that superbly. So the same genes carry on with the electric punch. Now this is something that I would never attempt on my own. I wouldn't recommend anybody attempts it also but this shows how it can go over these steep climbs and ruts and across there there is a sort of down slope so we will engage hill descent control for that now I need to carry a bit of momentum out here so you give a little bit gas here and it actually climbs up I honestly wouldn't do it they've told me to do it so I'm doing it but it can do that and that is actually pretty nasty so your hill descent control my foot is off the brake and the car deals with everything now tight turning circle of the punch being demonstrated as we go into this kind of steep down slope into the rut So again foot off the brake ESP does everything ESP is standard four wheel disc brakes 
and now we give it a little bit gas to climb out of the rut that we found ourselves in so the flashers indicate that the ESP is working over time you can't switch off ESP there is a sport mode but the ESP stays on all the time so no real musty but we can actually push it so once we get to the faster bit of this track we can push it first we get to the slalom so head into the slalom now this showcases the maneuverability of the punch and the agility of course it is heavier it's around 190 kilos heavier than the combustion engine punch but it can do that pretty well and because the weight is low down and this new skateboard architecture it actually lowers the center of gravity so the road holding is good and it gives you confidence when you chuck it around and now we got a rock bed and again i would not take any car over this but this just demonstrate the robustness of the platform shit this city is in quite bad condition so here's actually a good place to check out the tech that is on offer so it gets a 360 oh, camera and on the 360 camera you can see the side view sort of like a land rover or a range rover so using that i can position my left wheel accurately on this ramp make sure that my wheels are on the ramp properly dealing with the side slope we have a spotter but no need for his assistance And now we are done with that. It's time to have some fun. So sport mode activated. Sport drive mode. Oh, activate. Sport drive mode activated. Sport drive mode activated. So 120 bhp, 190 newton meters on this LR version. It grips pretty well, 16 inch tires. But these are of course low rolling resistance tires. Obviously done in press of range and efficiency. It does push wide at the front but you can actually lean on it pretty confidently and understeer doesn't set in too early so for a EV this actually is pretty good and then slam on the brakes four wheel disc brakes overall dynamically pretty well sorted and now let's head back on the road and talk a little bit more about the real world usage case So now back on the road and here's an observation from all that off-road testing that we did at that karting track and that is the petrol punch has an engine up in the nose and when you're climbing up that weight of the engine actually has an effect on the front wheels it pushes the front wheels further down and you get a little bit more traction whereas here with the battery weight uniformly distributed in the floor pan when you're going up you don't have much weight over the front wheels and that's why you need to carry some more momentum while you're climbing steep slopes you can't do it from the base of the hill you can't just start climbing straight up you need to carry momentum and you can't switch off esp so once the wheel starts spinning the esp cuts in your traction is cut out and then you will not make it up the hill on the road now we've done what 150 kilometers and this is growing on me. I was always impressed with the punch. The punch had that robustness, the sturdiness that is like a DNA, a trait that Tata Motors has in all their SUVs. That's there in the punch and that hasn't been diluted in the conversion of that to an EV. In fact, the increased torsional rigidity makes it nicer on the road, nicer to drive. It is faster. And we always said, right, that the punch can handle more power finally it gets more power the handling now finally you can push the dynamic envelope of this platform and of course there is understeer there is a fair bit of body roll but it all is safe and composed it actually feels very competent some of you guys on instagram you all said that this, in terms of the packaging, the size, the proportions, makes for a perfect city car. And I have to agree. You sit high up, so you get a great view ahead. And talking about that, I must point out, now, this new skateboard architecture is very different from the architecture 
and the underpinnings of the petrol punch it is higher because your batteries are taller but they have mounted the seats in such a way that your edge point your hip point of the seat is more or less the same as the petrol punch so it's got ease of ingress egress and you don't have the typical problem with evs where you sit knee up and you don't have under thigh support that isn't a problem in the punch ev so the packaging actually has been done really well and that's something that they are very proud of they've also taken the effort to blank out the panel that has the cut out for the fuel filler so it's got a new panel out there you don't have that fuel filler cut out or a dummy over there and they've moved the charging port to the nose now the benefit of that is obviously in terms of packaging and unlike the Nexon EV where you see those orange high tension cables all over the place here you don't see anything so that is also a nice touch one slightly strange thing about the punch EV is that you have these paddles this is to change the region settings but normally your left paddle is minus which means you go lower down the gears which means you get more region but here it is ulta it's opposite so on the right paddle as you tap it you increase the level of region and the left paddle is used to decrease the region level so it is the opposite of what we are used to in say mercs and audi electrics and even in the kona ev so that is one strange thing he was speaking to anand kulkarni who is the chief product officer for tata electric mobility and he was saying that it actually doesn't cost half a billion to 1 billion dollars to develop an all new ev architecture Tata Motors would not have been able to do it but they have done it intelligently and they really are a solid first mover in this space the punch ev we all thought that it would be a ice to ev conversion like the nexon but this is significantly upgraded you have over there updates you have the new electrical architecture and really it drives very well it is not only great for the city it will be great out on the highways too and the range the all important range 421 kilometers on the MIDC cycle it's some 40 kilometers off the Nexon EV Max so you actually have very good range real world you'll get around 300 kilometers of range this is very impressive in all respects the punch finally gets punch and that's my verdict on the punch ev tata motors is newest electric vehicle and this is significant even though the exterior only has a facelift over the petrol punch the underpinnings are all new and that bodes well for the future because these underpinnings are going to be stretched and expanded to accommodate the ultras the curve the harrier and the sierra don't we all want that sierra ev so going by the way this performs well all those ev we really have a lot of performance and the punch ev let's focus on this it looks good now the styling update really does work and it does cut a very striking shape on the road the interior upgrades make it so much nicer and it takes all the traditional strengths of the punch the ride the handling the robustness of the platform the safety and adds a layer of sophistication a layer of performance from the ev powertrain more in terms of nvh it is quieter it is easier to drive this punch ev at 14.49 lakhs for the fully loaded version plus 50000 more for the sunroof is very very nice i am very impressed q another k to k drive with one of these evs